A few weeks ago, the DJI Fly App was updated to give you some manual settings on the white balance. More recently, there was an update to the drone's firmware itself that gives you a few different frame rate options and finally gives you complete manual control over all your video settings. How do you get this update and why should you even care? Well, that is what I'm talking about today. Hello, I'm Ian and I probably play with far too many drones, but today I'm back with the incredible Mavic Mini. I still can't get over just how much DJI packed into this little drone, because every other small drone I've uh, played with normally has some massive failing. Normally the camera, but even the range and the stability is uh, often uh, not so good. Not so with the Mavic Mini. And now, one of the most frequent criticisms that I come across with the Mavic Mini has finally been put to bed. Because until now, when you went into the still camera mode, you were able to adjust the shutter speed in the ISO. But when you went into the video mode, those adjustments disappeared, and you had no manual control over them at all. But with the latest firmware update, that's all changed, and we now have full manual control in video settings as well. So that's all well and good, but why should we even care when the auto settings we've been stuck with until now have been pretty good, to be honest? Well, before I go into that, let's just make sure you know how to actually get the update. Make sure that your phone is connected to the remote control, switch it all on, switch the drone, and wait for the camera view to come up, showing that the drone and the remote are fully connected. If it doesn't offer you the option to update as you start up, click the three dots on the top right to open up settings, then click about. Scroll down and you can see it should offer you the option to update firmware. To do this, you're gonna need internet access for your phone to download the update package before it then uploads it to the drone itself. So make sure you've got some good mobile phone signal or Wi-Fi. It can take a good five to 10 minutes and make sure your batteries are charged up as well. So that's how you get updated. Why even worry about it? Well, look, it is always a good idea to keep your firmware uh, up to date. You often get new functionality, and in this case, you've got a fair bit of new functionality. The main thing being the new manual options on video. So to understand why that's gonna be of uh, benefit to you and why I think it's such a good thing, let's have a very quick photography lesson. Video and pictures are generally all about the light getting into your camera sensor. And there are three things in your camera that affect this, and therefore the quality of the pictures or video you're taking. It's known as the exposure triangle, and you have the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. The aperture is literally how big is the hole that lets the light into the camera. The shutter speed is how long that hole is open for, which dictates how much light is getting into the sensor for each frame or, um, or picture. And finally, you have the ISO, which adjusts the sensitivity to that light as it's coming in. So all three elements are directly related, and until recently, you couldn't adjust any of them with the DJI Fly app at all. The aperture is fixed at uh, f2.8, and the ISO and shutter speed were both automatically set by the app itself. And whilst it was generally pretty good at adjusting them, in some situations it wouldn't go fully to plan. One of the most common uh, issues we face uh, when filming uh, aerial photography is patchy sun with bright fluffy clouds, a day like today because the bright fluffy clouds make the top half of the picture extremely bright in, co in comparison to the landscape in the lower half of the picture. This situation is made even worse when you're trying to do a big sweeping reveal by bringing the camera up from below. As soon as the sky comes into picture, the auto exposure kicks in, darkening the picture, and you lose the landscape as it goes very dark. Now until now, you did have a little tool called exposure lock in the bottom right, which did help stop this from happening, but it was very much trial and error, uh, and you had to play around until it looked good. But now you've actually got the ability to control precisely by adjusting the shutter speed to a set value. As you can see here, when you go down to the little auto manual symbol in the far bottom right, when you're in video mode, you tap it and it opens up the ISO and shutter speed dials. You can set the values and once they're set, they won't change, meaning that when you carry out a similar scene, this time the landscape stays in perfect exposure level, even when the very bright sky creeps in. So, all well and good, but how do you actually know what adjustments and, and values to put in these new settings? As a rule of thumb, it's best to try and film things with an ISO of 100. Once you increase the sensitivity, especially beyond, say, 400, picture quality can degrade and you can get a bit of a noisy or grainy image. 
So this is straight away one of the biggest advantages of these new settings because now you can set the ISO to be 100 and know that it is not going to change as it otherwise might have done when the um, auto settings were kicking in. So the only remaining adjustment you've got is the shutter speed. It's literally how long the shutter is staying open for each frame. The longer it is, the more light's getting in, but in addition, the more blurred the subject will be if you or the subject is moving fast. As a general rule, you want to try and keep the shutter speed to around 1 50th, 1 60th, 1 70th of a second. There's a filmmaker's rule of thumb that tells you to keep the shutter speed twice that of the frame rate that you're actually shooting in uh, for the best cinematic look. I've done videos on that before, but in a nutshell, this produces the smoothest, uh, most natural looking video. If you've got a very fast shutter speed, then things can look a little bit false as if it's been filmed in a studio or have a slight CGI look about it, which really isn't that good. Low shutter speed gives a tiny bit of natural blur in every frame, producing a nice smooth video. The frame rate that you shoot in is probably more to do with the type of TV system that uh, exists in the area that you live in. North America has NTSC, that's 30 frames per second. Conversely, Europe and uh, other parts of the world that uses the PAL system, uh, that's only 25 frames per second. Wherever you are in the world, most cinematic films are shot in uh, 24 frames per second. And uh, 24 frames per second is actually one of the additional options you now get after this update. Either way, no matter what you're filming in, as I said, you want to aim for a uh, shutter speed of around 1 50th to 1 60th of a second for the best result. So that is my last point here. We have our triangle of aperture, ISO and shutter speed. Aperture is fixed and can't be adjusted. And I've already said that to get the best result, leave the ISO at 100. So that only leaves you one kind of adjustment here. And I've said that you want to be trying to aim for about 1 50th or 1 60th of a second for there. On a bright sunny day like today, that could be a bit impossible when uh, the shutter speed could easily go up to say 1000th of a second. And that is where the last part of today's video comes in. You may have uh, heard or seen these before. These are ND filters. Again, I've done other videos on these and how they work and explain the full workings of them. For now, you can see them as a dark glass filter that reduces the amount of light coming into the lens so that you can then adjust the shutter speed down to the value that you want and not, be, uh, not have to have a very fast shutter speed because of the bright sun. These ones from Freewell come in a range of values. I tend to use an ND8 or an ND16 uh, to, for me to keep the shutter speed to under 100th of a second. Filters can be a little bit fiddly to clip over the lens, but they don't get in the way of the startup procedure and you can even leave it in place with the gimbal guard in place. So if you're usually shooting in similar lighting, then you can actually leave the right ND filter on all the time. Last year when I was filming in California and Nevada, I just left the ND16 on all the time and I was very happy with all of the results. Today though, here in England on this sunny day, you can see that when I put the ND16 on, it got a little bit too dark, shutter speed was getting a little bit too slow. So change over to an ND8. This time you can see the shutter speed is nice and low. The resulting video looks way better with rich colors and all the landscape exposed exactly as I wanted it. And this is why so many people are so happy with this latest update, as you are finally able to set the ISO and the shutter speed in video mode exactly as you want it. It lets you experiment and get the type of scene and lighting that you want. Cyclist. It lets you, um, it lets you experiment and get the type of scene and lighting that you want without being at the mercy of those uh, auto exposure settings. Even without ND filters, you can experiment in extreme contrast settings and have fun filming exactly as you want to. So hopefully this is gonna give you a few ideas to play around with. And you do need to play around and experiment to work out what values are going to, and settings are gonna work for you in your lighting conditions. I'll put a few links uh, below for more information for those that want it. Hopefully uh, summer is coming along in the Northern Hemisphere and we're all going to be let out soon and able to fly again. But uh, look, if you like this sort of stuff as ever, give me a little thumbs up. And if you really like it, hit the old sub and ding the dong to get notified each time I put something new out. Either way, until next time, have fun, stay safe, stay sane, happy flying. Cheers.